Welcome to HDTV. You now rocking with your boy. Man, I know I'm late with my um breakdown of the, the past two nights of basketball. Hey, I work. And then it was my birthday. <laughs> Excuse me. And it was my birthday. So I had to get turned up, man. Now, we're going to start off with the series. I'm going to run through this um, because I'm going to do probably another one later on tonight on the Bucks and Heat and then the Lakers and the Rockets game three. Now, let's talk about no planners Paul finally showing up. We're going to talk about the Clippers and the Nuggets game first. No planners Paul decided to show up which he did great. He was keeping the Clippers in the game. He was keeping it close, and then he hit some shots to put them up. And it, Kawhi Leonard threw the, the, the clutch pass right there to Zubat. Zubat got a big dunk. Um, Kawhi had a bad shoot tonight, but defensively, he took over the game. And he had 14 rebounds. That's what makes you a superstar. When you're not scoring the ball efficiently or you're not shooting it well, basically what you have to do, you have to turn into somebody else. Now, the Nuggets, they came out just like I predicted, aggressive. But Joker has been playing like a superstar, finally. He's finally playing with confidence. He's playing with that swagger. He's playing with that toughness. Like, look, I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm finna come out here. I'm finna dominate. Can't nobody guard me. Can't nobody shut me down. And it's the truth. There's nobody who could guard Joker. That's why it would surprise me also was that Doc ran a trap on Joker as well as Jamal Murray. He he did that mid-game. He didn't wait until later to do it. He did it as early as he can. Now, some of the fouls were very suspect, but that's what, that's what to be expected. They don't want the Clippers to get out to a big... They want the Clippers to be tired before they get to the Lakers. But Denver, with them coming out strong like they did, they basically put the pressure on the Clippers like, yo, you go, if you're going to try to score with us, we could take it there. Now, this is what messed the Nuggets up. When they put Craig in when they were up by, I believe, 10 or 12. When Craig came in, Craig stunk up the joint, had turnovers, was missing shots, wasn't boxing out, and practically... That's what cost them the game a little bit. They, they they put Michael Porter Jr. back on the bench too soon, I felt. Then the second half, they waited too late to bring him back in. So what you're going to have to do is I would let Michael Porter come off the bench still, but I would let him start and finish the game. Sort of like what Tony Kukoc used to do back in the day for the Bulls or Vinnie Johnson, or others. So, that's what needs to happen. Michael Porter Jr. changed the outcome when he baptized Montrez, Montrez Harrell. He, he took Montrez's soul. I was surprised Montrez still was able to finish the game because he just, man, he boomed it on him. And Joker was basically doing that little hook, hooking the defender's arm and then getting to the hole to the hole and making his shots. But this game gets an A. I give this game an A, not an A minus or an A plus, just an A. Doesn't get an A plus because I felt like there was some questionable calls. And I felt like during the game, the Nuggets really let that game go. They could have won. But the problem is is that the, the Clippers, when they started putting pressure on them defensively, and when they came back at the end of the first half, as well as late, that killed the Nuggets. 
The Nuggets also went cold. They went inexplicably cold late. They were missing shots. Jeremy Grant could have hit two threes to really win the game for him, to put him up. That would have put pressure on the Clippers. He missed. So when he did that, that opened the door for the Clippers to take over. Lou Williams played like shit. He played like crap. But when it counted the most, Lou stepped up with scoring and def defensively. Lou Williams' defense, when he was pinned against the, um, I believe it was the Joker, they were like, they were one-on-one, -on -one, and he got a strip on the Joker. That was, that was beautiful. Lou Williams defensively stepped the hell up. He stepped up. He did his job. He did what he was supposed to. He came off the bench. What we need him to do is score, though, but he was cold. But because of Paul George being hot and making the buckets, that really helped the Clippers sustain. Kawhi also, before he went back to missing, he made a string of shots from the mid-range and the post. The, the, man, the man is incredible. <laughs> he made some shots to bring them back closer. Once they got closer... Then they just started finishing after that. They finished the game. Now, the Nuggets have to decide is this. When you go cold from three, you have got to attack the basket. Jamal Murray finally attacked the basket after three quarters when he was cold, and he made something happen. But the next time he tried to go against Kawhi, Kawhi gave him the middle finger and blocked his shot. That just shows you how strong Kawhi is if he's blocking your shot with a middle finger. <laughs> that means you're weak. <laughs> Jamal going to have to get back in the weight room <laughs> ASAP. <laughs> but the game was great, man. I mean, we finally had a series that was completely good. Like the refs didn't do too bad of a job this game. They, they allowed them to play during periods, certain periods of time. And then, you know, they stepped in when they needed to step in, you know, to do what they got to do. You know how the refs do. And it played great. Zubak, Zubak is going to be a liability. If I'm Doc, I would start Montrez Harrell, and then I would rotate Zubak in there. But if you're going to, I'm not starting, but I would bring Harrell in late, like later in the game. I would bring him in later and then let him start the fourth quarter and end the fourth quarter. Jermichael Green, I would bring him in too to play some center because he did a good job on Joker as well. He did a good job. So I will put those guys on Joker and bang with them. Now, it's hard to bang with Joker because they're going to call fouls because, you know, Joker's going to get that call, it's especially over um over Harrell and, and Green. You know, that's Joker. So now that, now, that, now that you know this, Doc, I would bring Jermichael Green in. I would start Jermichael Green. I would start him, and then I would rotate Zubak and Harrell in. Um, it would work because Jermichael would be able to switch better, and Jermichael can hit that three ball when you need him to hit it. So I would do that. I would try him out. Shamit did decent. I would bring him. I would start him like you've been doing, and then as the game go, if he does well, cool. Keep him. If he don't, you can leave him on the bench. Reggie Jackson, I don't believe, played. If he did, he probably played for a few minutes. He didn't really play that long. Pat Bev's defense was very key. Pat Beverly's aggressiveness and his defense on Murray and the ability to switch him, Kawhi, and Paul on Murray was a big, big key to the series. It was, it was I mean, to the game last night. It was a real big, big key. Big play for them to do that. Now, 
the next game, the Nuggets are still confident. Michael Porter Jr. balled out. He shut me up. Him and Joker have shut me up so far. They have really surprised me. But they have to play defense. And they have to finish. If the Nuggets finish, they could win. But it showed you late in the game that Kawhi Leonard and, and Paul George just took over the game. And Kawhi Leonard playing that point guard position that's to me what he needs to play. He needs to be the point guard, which they've been letting him be the point guard, and they've had success. They've had success late as well as early in the game. They've had success. Denver being aggressive is very key because that's going to basically fluster the Clippers. The Clippers are playing very lackadaisical at times. But when they turn up, they could turn up. If they decide to say, you know what, we finna shut the Nuggets down from the first quarter to the fourth quarter, they could do it. You could you could tell from seeing that. The Nuggets also, um, late in the game, I would, like I said, put Porter Jr. in. I would keep him in and go from there. Mike Malone has, is showing me that he can coach a little bit. He's a decent coach. Jamal Murray, you have got to stop shooting threes. I'm gonna tell you like I'm gonna tell, like I told Tatum and Jalen Brown, and it showed it worked when they cut down on those threes and attack the basket. You can make things happen if you get to the second level. You can hit Gary Harris for a shot. You can hit Morris for a shot. You can hit Joker. You can hit Grant. You can hit Porter Jr. You can hit Craig. You can hit all these guys that you're playing with. Now, Torrey Craig, Mike Malone, keep him at the end of the bench. You only bring him in for a few minutes. You can't leave Craig in there when things aren't looking good. You have to pull him. You have to play a quick pull with Craig because Craig has been stinking up the joint since last game. He's partial to reason that they lost this game past game in game three game two he was okay but this game when he's going down you have got to let him go to the bench and you have to bring somebody else out there who's ready to do it you should have put michael porter jr in back in to take his spot and then you could have brought grant back so th th this is the thing the thing is that the Clippers, I still think they can win this in five. But if they play like they did in game two, then they will win this in about six or seven games. I just don't see the Nuggets having that. I just don't see the Nuggets being able to close the series out. I just don't see it. So... But Kawhi Leonard showed you that he's a superstar. He went to play defense, and that defense and rebounding and assisting, it really helped the Clippers win. Yeah, Paul George scored the points, which he should have. He's a superstar, right? Y'all say he's a superstar. So what? what's the deal? So what's the deal? We supposed to give him a, a pat on the back like Shannon Sharp today pissed me the hell off talking about, oh, so he carried Kawhi. He ain't carried Kawhi. By the time he helped carry him, Kawhi been carrying this soft-ass dude the whole damn playoffs. Anthony Davis been carrying LeBron the whole season. So stop hearing that crap, Shannon, because you mad because Kawhi's a better player. Stop hating him. Kawhi did what he was supposed to do. Paul George did what he was supposed to do. Now, next game come, I don't want to hear about no goddamn depression, Paul. I don't want to hear no damn, no, no damn, oh, I got depression, my anxieties. Man, take your ass on somewhere. If you not ready to play, stay your ass back home in the bubble at the hotel. 
Because we want winners out here, Paul. We want winners. That game last night, you showed you you could you have potential to be a winner. But you need to excuse me, you need to do that more often, man. More often. Montrez, stop letting light skinned niggas dunk on you. Stop letting team light skin dunk on you. Stop letting them push you around. Stop getting frustrated, ready to curse everybody out. That's what they want you to do is get frustrated so you get tossed. So you guys have got to play better. Zubak, you have got to move your feet. You know Joker's going to come with that hook. When he comes with that hook, put your arms in the air real high and move with them. Move your feet. Slide. Slide. That's all you got to do. Just slide. Joker, keep doing what you're doing for the Nuggets. Jamal Murray, stop shooting all these threes. Go to the hole. Get to the next level. Do other things besides what you're doing. Get your play up. Stop having these games where you have one game you good and the next game you're trash. No. Stop that mediocrity. Play. Gary Harris, keep doing your thing. Because of you, you're the reason why the Nuggets are clicking because his energy, his toughness, his going at it with the other player, him going at Paul George, not being afraid, great job. Now, Paul George guarding Jamal Murray that was also a big key. Paul George took Jamal Murray out the game. And that's the thing that Paul George does. That's what that's that's what you have to do. Continue doing that. This game I said I give it an A. This was the best game. The next game, I believe the Nuggets will sneak a win. They will win, but it will be it will be sort of like game two. But the Clippers can win if they do what they've been doing. Which is, but if the Clippers come out playing tough defense, pressing and trapping and playing, playing out of their mind defensively, then the Nuggets will lose this game. They will lose. The Clippers have to come out like the Celtics did yesterday. Telling them, we're the Clippers. Y'all ain't nothing but Denver. We're here to play. We're here to win. We want to go to the next round. We want to win the championship. You got to play like that, LA. Nothing's given to you. Kawhi's the only guy on this team with championship DNA. That's a player. Y'all have to follow him. Keep following him and you guys will go far. Now, I got the Nuggets winning the next game because this is what the Nuggets do. They'll lose a game and they'll come back playing great and fire on all cylinders. And I, I still don't trust Doc because Doc doesn't switch. And when things are going bad for him, he just leaves it how it is instead of changing some things up. Now... That's enough of that game. I went way too long. Now, the Boston Celtics, do we really got to talk about this game? They did everything I told them to do. Attack the basket. If your threes are on, that's when you take your threes. Jalen Brown baptized OG Anobi and told him, I'm the real OG. You ain't nothing. No you ain't nothing. No I'm the real OG. So Jalen Brown, he is the real OG. <laughs> he baptized. It was, it was so nasty watching in, in real time. Me and my brother was like, oh, it's over. <laughs> oh, it's over. The game's over. Kimball Walker destroyed him. Jason Tatum destroyed him. Marcus Smart was defending like crazy, playing the passing lanes, hitting three after three, was putting them out their misery. 
That's what I told y'all about the Celtics. If the Celtics just, when they're missing threes, take it to the hole, they will dominate. They are the best team to me talent-wise in the playoffs. They're the best talented team. They have probably the deepest bench of anybody. Seriously. Seriously. They have probably the deepest team. They don't need one. They got four guys who can close the game. Who can, well, you got four guys who can manage the game. You got four guys who could close it. Yeah, like I said, Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and Kimba Walker. They put their foot on the Raptors' neck and let them know you guys aren't nothing. And Nick and Brad Stevens, you finally took your head out your ass. And actually was having the guys post up. You had Tatum posting up more. He was killing them posting up. I kept saying the last video, Tatum, go to the hole. Post up. They cannot stop you. Jalen Brown, keep attacking the basket. Because in game four, Brown was attacking the basket. He was killing them. Jalen Brown, to me, is the most talented player on the team. Jason Tatum is the superstar because he is more skilled than Jalen Brown. But Jalen Brown is more athletic and is a way better defender than Tatum. And Brown is a better inside guy attacking the basket player. He's better at doing that than Jason Tatum. No disrespect to Jason Tatum, but Jalen Brown, you know, Brown is that guy. <laughs> and Brown was aggressive. If the Celtics play aggressive like this all the time, they can win the championship. Seriously, they can win it all. I really don't see anybody who can stop them outside of maybe Miami or the Clippers. But if they play like they did yesterday, how they did, oh, it's going to be on and popping for these rest of the playoffs. It's going to be on and popping for the rest of the playoffs. Um, the Raptors, um, they got exposed. They're nothing without Kawhi Leonard. What, what Kawhi Leonard did for them last year, he managed the game. He knew how to keep everybody calm. So if Larry go on a cold streak or he go on his little erratic behavior, Van Fleet go cold, Pascal's just been missing in action. I don't know where he at. And if he actually play inside more, he would do well. But for some reason, they got Pascal shooting all these damn threes when he don't need to. He's not good at it. OG Anobi, even after getting dunked on, still played hard. He still kept his head trying to do well, but they were out of it. The Raptors should have been swept this series. This series is done next game. I'm sorry. The Raptors are mediocre. They won off of the Celtics, the Celtics' mistake and blunders. The Celtics should have swept this series. Should have been over. So enough of that series. Let's go to the next one. Who was it? Um, Miami and the Bucks. Miami Heat left the Miami Heat. Their problem was in the game, they couldn't close. They were missing shots. They were turning the ball over inexplicably. When it is late in the ball game, Miami should have kept going to Tyler Hero. Hero is your closer. <laughs> Outside of Jimmy Butler, if Butler don't got it going, give the ball to Hero. Hero will shoot you in the foot. <laughs> he will shoot your team out the gym. Not only that, Hero can handle the ball too. He did some things with the ball in his hands. 
The guy, the guy has ice in his veins, man. He he's ready. But the Bucks play with resiliency. They played better without Giannis, not because they played better because Miami didn't know how to handle them because they were moving the ball. If Budenholzer was moving the ball when Giannis was out there, they would have won this series. Because the Bucks are very talented. Chris Middleton has actually been playing good. He's not playing like the sorry guy. Now he'll fade time to time late, but he'll make some, he made some big shots. DiVincenzo, number zero. I said he was number 10 before. He's number zero. Budenholzer should have been playing him more than Eric Bledsoe. Eric Bledsoe is so garbage that they should just put his, they, they, when they go by a waste management center, just dump him, just dump all of him in there. And his jersey, his kicks, everything, his whole family heritage. The guy's a bum. He's not good at all. He's not good. Brooke Lopez did his thing hitting big shots, made some big plays. Um, then you had um the bench step up. The, the Bucks bench really outplayed the Heat bench. That basically what happened near the end. Wesley Matthews, that matchup on Jimmy Butler, I called it. That matchup works because Wesley Matthews is a bigger body and he's just as big as Jimmy and he's just as physical. So they you put him on him. Middleton can't guard Jimmy. Middleton's too small for Jimmy. Even though he's tall, he doesn't have that size to be able to, to go at him. Jimmy could just body him up, post him up, and then take him to the hole. <laughs> So Giannis getting hurt. I don't know if he's going to play in the next game. I don't think he's playing. Um, but, you know, tip your hat off to the Bucks. You know, they're, they're still playing. They're, they're still out here playing, which shows you that the Bucks have a good team. Their coach, to me, is just not good. <laughs> Like, I just think he's overrated. I thought he was overrated in Atlanta. You know, in, 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 in big-time situations, to me, he doesn't know how to coach well. He, he, he chokes in situational basketball. He does. But what the Heat have to do, the Heat have to finish. They have to close. When they close, this will show in tonight's game, are they ready or aren't they ready? Are they real or are they real? Are they not? You know, you, you gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta play, you gotta play with that tenacity. You gotta, you gotta stay with it. And Brooke Lopez, late in the game, he stayed in the post. He shot a couple threes, but he was working the post. He was taking it to the hole. That's all you got to do. But the Miami Heat will win this because I just feel like they're fundamentally, they're fundamentally in sync. They're all on the same page as far as chemistry. And Iguodala, Butler... And Crowder are 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 very good perimeter defenders. They're great perimeter. I think they probably have the best perimeter defensive team outside of the Clippers. You can say that. The um the Bucks, the Bucks did some great things as far as late in the game. They ate, they were managing it well. Bledsoe got some layups going to the hole. Um, you know, like I said, the, the game was, the, the game, the game was okay. I mean, it, it was, it was cool, but to me, that was more about Miami losing it. Tyler Hero, like I said, give him the ball in the late situations. 
he will shoot you. He will get you out of that close game. You'll win that game. You'll win that game. And Kelly Olenek, I hope he stay healthy. Don't bring Myers Leonard back. Let Olenek play. Because Olenek is good at rim protecting, sliding his feet, switching off, and defending. Him and Bam have been doing an excellent job. They've been doing an excellent job. But I, I got Miami winning tonight. Um, I think they'll close the series out 4-1. And they'll be ready for the Celtics. Celtics to close out the next series. We'll have Boston versus Miami. Going to be a great game. Now, the Lakers and the um, the Lakers and the Rockets. The Lakers, this team is so terrible. I just don't know why. I already know why, but I just don't know why people love them or and over glorifying them when they haven't done nothing yet. LeBron James got some highlight dunks. He got some blocks, and, you know, he was put in that zone where he played in the back. You know, he's not going to guard the perimeter that much. You know, it's, it, it just is what it is, man. It's, we know how it's going to go. The Rockets need to keep Westbrook. This is the thing. When Westbrook is not on, you got to put him on the bench, Dan Tony. Because when he went to the bench, the Heat was killing the Lakers. I mean, the Rockets were killing the Lakers. When Westbrook was on the bench, most of the time in the game, when they had him on the bench, they balled out. They balled out. They did their job. Everybody was in sync. James Harden played a, a great game, even though he wasn't shooting a lot. He facilitated the game like it was supposed to. That's why I tell everybody, Harden is a point guard who could just score. He has the feel of controlling the game. He could control the game. And he controlled it great. Defensively, he was getting it AD, LeBron, and all of them. Harden has been... You guys can't say Harden don't play defense no more. Harden play defense, man. He's been doing it for the past year or two. He just doesn't play it all the time, but he play defense. Covington hit some big shots. Covington hit some shots. Daniel House was hitting some shots. But what made me mad is Dan Tony left him on the bench too long. When your guy got the hot hand, you got to bring him back right away so he could get his rhythm back so then he could shoot him. If you would have brought Daniel House back in that second half, y'all would have beat the Lakers because he would have got hot. The Lakers wouldn't have had no, no answer. The Lakers were getting all the foul calls, and they still almost lost this game. They won by eight. They really should have lost by 15 or 20 points because they are terrible. They're terrible at playing the pick and roll. They're terrible guarding the shooters off the screens. They're terrible rotating. If it wasn't for the refs in the NBA, this Laker team would not be here. So all you LeBrownie fans, including Shannon No Sharp and Nick Big Nose Wrong, a.k.a. Mr. Gonzo, Nick Gonzo, this team would not be anywhere. They're not that good. They don't rotate well. They don't communicate. When I watched them play, the Rockets were more exciting. The Rockets started coming back when they shot them out the gym in the third quarter. And then they had the lead. They could have kept the lead if they kept Westbrook on the damn bench. Westbrook sucks, okay? He sucks. Bring him in sparingly. When he's not shooting right and you need a bucket, leave Daniel House out there. Daniel House is a problem. And defensive-wise, Daniel House was giving LeBron problems. He was giving him problems. He was pushing him around. He was accepting the challenge. 
LeBron James is going to do his best front running, <laughs> his best front running thing, whenever he can do it or not. That's just who he's going to be. He's a front runner. He's always going to be that way. But I also like what the Lakers did defensively. They were trapping Harden. They were, they were, they were, they were leaving a guy down there to run. One guy was running full court press on Harden, and then he'll back off to play the zone. They played an okay zone, but you can beat that zone. All the Rockets got to do is hit their shots, play their defense. They'll win the game. But like I said, this series will go five because. They want the Lakers in. The Lakers are finna, they finna win out these the rest of these games. It's gonna be 5-1. And um Houston, but it's gonna be a tough finishing the games out. The Lakers are gonna be tired. So they're gonna look to extend that Clipper series. Watch. Watch what I tell you. They're gonna try to extend that Clipper series. Once they extend that, then they can let the Lakers just do what they gotta do and get them out of there. Anthony Davis finally grew some balls. He actually played good. He actually went to the post, was fading away. And then he went back to his softness. I think it was in the second or the third quarter. He went through his little softness. P.J. Tucker was pushing him around, even though he was making it over P.J. Tucker. P.J. Tucker was toughening, toughening him up, beating him up. And Anthony Davis doesn't like that physicality. So you have to get physical. If, if, if the Rockets want to win, they have got to get physical with the Lakers. Beat their ass. Every time they come off a screen, boom, put a defender there to boom, stop them. Every time LeBron get the ball, what you guys need to do, you need to full court press him. Put a defender on him to guard him full court to pressure him. LeBron James has trouble controlling the ball. He's a terrible dribbler. If you attack him and go at him, he will have so many turnovers, he won't know what to do. That's what I'm saying. Now, I don't went way too long, but I gave you the I gave you um a letter grade for the Clippers and the Nuggets for the um Celtics and the Raptors. I give that an A plus. Because the Celtics did what the freak I told them to do. Stop shooting all them threes and attack the basket. They can't stop you. Marcus Saul is Punani. He, he's not there. He's done. Ibaka is their only guy in the middle that can could, that could hold you. Now, they threw Boucher and some other people in there for the um, Raptors. Like, but... It's over. The Celtics get an A-plus for that because they did what they were supposed to do, finally. <laughs> the Miami Heat and Bucks game, I give that a B-plus because the supporting cast for the Bucks showed heart. They showed their will to fight. They didn't just say, you know what, I'm copping out, I'm done. No, they actually played a great game. They closed the deal. Even though they got some mysterious calls, but we know what that was about because they wanted to extend the series to see if Giannis was going to come back. But it looks like he might not be coming back. Now, let's see. The Heat got to finish. The Heat got to close. They have to close. Finish. That's y'all word. Finish. That's your work. That's your word. Finish. Win the damn game. No excuses. Win. Win the game. That's it. The Lakers and Rockets, I gave that a C plus. I gave it a, well, I gave it a B minus. I give it a B minus. Because the Rockets play with resilience. Even though Westbrook stuck up the joint, when they had them off the, on, on the bench, their team took off. They played great. But 
can y'all play Tyson Chandler at least a few plays to get some rebounds and switch it up a little bit? Damn. You know he has success in beating LeBron before by brim protecting. But I guess he done, so I don't know. I don't know why he's there. I just think that was a waste of a pickup. They could have got somebody younger if they weren't going to use Chandler. But um, I hope I covered everything. Um, thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Um, if you want to donate to the play, I mean donate to the page. I'm saying plays. Donate to the page. Um, it's Harry Two. That's H A R R Y and the number two. Again, if you want to donate to the page, you can cash at me at Harry Two, which is H A R R Y and the number two. And um, if you don't donate to the page, please like this, comment, and subscribe, and share this to other people. So we could get as many people as we can, man. You know, we, we got a lot of things coming um, next year. Um, music, a lot of music finna come out on um, videos. Um, other things is going to come out. Um, more content. Um, I'm, I'm going to have my own page soon. I'm going to have my own, um, my own website where you could click the link on YouTube and it'll take you right to my website where you'll be able to listen to videos see some new music um and some new um we're gonna try to do some um um we're gonna also try to do um some other things some other content and it's gonna be on there i'm still gonna be on youtube but i'm gonna create my own uh, website so you guys could come to it and you know check out some stuff we're gonna have some um some shirts you if you if you're looking at the video now in the picture that's my shirt there that's welcome to hd tv we're going to get those done probably by um later this year, early next year tops. We're going to have those shirts for you. Um and like I said, man, thank you for listening and we out, man. La boy